going to do a practice session today. I've got a, um, a couple of things. There will be two, uh, a text and then a recording. Uh, so we'll go from a little bit easier to a little bit more difficult. And I want to review the whole idea of a practice with you. You remember the idea of deliberate practice? If I just interpret every day, am I doing a deliberate practice? If I'm working uh, on a normal day, of course I'm getting some practice and it's a good thing and I stay um, I, st I stay fit, I stay uh, well well up on my skills to some extent. But in deliberate practice, what you do is you zero in on your weak points and you devise exercises to work on those weak points. And in order to uh, zero in, you need to uh, do the kind of practice that we are, we do to, we're doing today. So the components of deliberate practice are first of all, focus. You're focusing on something that is specific. Uh, you will probably take a look at, for example, in, in interpreting, it might be how well you understand the, uh, the language, how well you are really listening while you take notes, whether your notes are legible, etc. So you have a focus and then you choke it into parts and you devise exercises, like I was saying. So the basketball player, there was a the, the, actually, I didn't cover that part. It's kind of fun. So when we have um, we have these two basketball players, one of them is shooting 200 sh practice shots, and the other one shoots 50. Uh, player A is shooting 200. But player player B only shoots 50. Dribbles the dribbles the ball a little bit leisurely, takes a break, and talks to her her friends. Whereas player A has a a colleague there catching the ball each time, and and writing down how many times. She missed and how many times she made it, how many times it shot too far to the left, how many times it went too far to the right, too long or too short. And all of this is being monitored, being, so she's getting measurements, she's getting monitoring, she's getting feedback. And after the game, uh, player A gets, takes a look at all these statistics and realizes, okay, I'm shooting a little bit off to the left, so I'm gonna start correcting that. I hope next time it'll be more even between left and right, et cetera, and she will start being focused on what was wrong and how to fix it and devise exercises in order to fix it. So in, we're talk, when we're talking about interpreting, that would be, for example, oh, I, I don't feel like I, re like I really understand the source language very well, or I don't understand this technical language very well. So I'm gonna focus on the things that I think uh, might not be going well. Um, and in this case, it would be in the practice. I will chunk it into parts and divide devise exercises for each part. I want to make sure as an interpreter that I'm doing some kind of monitoring, feedback, and measurement, just like the basketball player. I'm going to maybe record myself and have that colleague comment, and that's what we'll do today. And I'll also occasionally work with a coach or with an expert, every, a teacher, maybe if you're in a, in a program. And then you will try to identify the strong and weak points, which we're going to call your challenges. And then Number five, you devise uh, targeted exercises for each weakness. So for example, if you have a problem understanding, let's say uh, English when spoken with an accent from India, you will find a speech or you will find a radio station or something in India and you'll just listen to it all the time and you'll try to do a few interpretations from that kind of a speech. So you will devise uh, targeted exercises. Here's sort of a, um, a frequency type of thing. If you have a coach or a teacher, you might work with that person once or twice a month. If you have a colleague, hopefully you can meet up once or twice a week and then by yourself, maybe you'll do an hour or two a day, depending on how much work you have. But in these days, there's practically no work, at least for me. So you'll have plenty of times to work on that. So you'll, the whole idea is to say, see, where are my challenge areas? So could it be the source language, as I was saying? Am I listening? Am I really analyzing? Am I doing like Selesiewicz did when I hear that a satellite is 750 kilometers high? Am I saying, oh, okay, I know that distance. It's like from Paris to Toulouse. That's the kind of an analysis we do. Then we decide what to write and how to write it. Is that a weak point? Uh, are we able to read our notes? Maybe your handwriting is really poor, like mine. Uh, am I able to remember? Maybe not. If not, why? Perhaps I was looking at my notes too much and not really 
listening. How about my delivery? Is it smooth? Is it fast? Is it pleasant? It has to be. Your target language pronunciation. You know, I still come across combinations in French, which I've been speaking for 40 years, that I find just a little bit tricky to pronounce. So you, you never know. You might have a word that you have a hard time pronouncing. You got to practice. Like I used to do in Portugal, I walk down the street, look at all the signs, and I remember cabaleiro, a word I had such a hard time saying, cabaleiro, because there's two L's with these two diphthongs. So you got to be sort of a, a fanatic about it, to always working on it. And then your target language word choice. Now I set up a Google Sheet, right? You can you can pull this what you see here. You can pull this up on the on the Facebook group, and here are some of the aspects of what is you would be looking at. My vocabulary as a fourth source language. Am I having trouble with idioms, accents? We mentioned a, a guy who's from India speaking English. Is my listening focused? Am I listening all the time, or am I suspending listening sometimes because I'm thinking about my notes. You can't do that. Do I have active listening, etc. So here we have all the criteria that we have gone through. You can pull up this uh, spreadsheet and you can even add to these many things, many things that you might find are a problem according to the feedback you get while listening to your own recording or listening to colleagues or listening to the critique we're going to do here. So you have this thing here and I wanted to just show this, I prepared this last night. If you look now at the um, Facebook uh, group, you'll, there's a place there where you can, uh, it says self-evaluation sheet and so you just click on that link which is there and what appears is the very same sheet that we just showed you. You see there's this tab but there's also a second tab. This second tab, if you click there, on the bottom, you see that? It'll, it'll come up like this, and that's the very same thing we were looking at. And what you can do is say, today I had a problem with listening, tomorrow listening, problem with listening. And, you, and when you start seeing a lot of it in one of these columns, you go, okay, now I can target my exercises to that specific skill in order to do uh, deliberate practice on that skill, right? Is everybody following that? Want to hear a, a big yes, yes, hello. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Thank you, thank you. I know your mics are not all automatically on. So good, good. Now, we're going to take a look at how I recommend that you actually do your critique of a colleague. 